Gather round, mortals. For the first time, hear the tale of young Atreus's maiden trip into the perilous Norse wilds, where malice and danger abound. Attempting to help a vulnerable creature, the boy wandered out beyond his protected woods alone. But I can't tell the whole story here, can I? You'll have to step inside. Atreus awoke to find his father missing. Not that there was anything unusual about that. Tasked with retrieving their dinner, Kratos would often take leave on day-long hunts. Why it took all day, Atreus never fully understood, but he knew better than to ask. After a quick breakfast, the boy got up and headed outside to practice his archery. He drew his bow taut, let his deep breath loose, and released an arrow. It sailed far beyond his target, becoming just another stick in the woods. The boy sighed. He'd have to find it later, likely when he wasn't looking for it. Determined to hit the target this time, he grabbed another arrow and focused hard. He held the string till his arm burned and let it fly. A bullseye! Well, almost. Maybe if he looked at it from a certain angle. You know. His mother called. And though he wasn't quite done yet, Atreus put his arrows down and went inside. Every day she would teach him, mostly language and archery. Honestly, the kid was pure dead brilliant, reading and writing on his own already. Today she gave him a lesson he was especially excited about. The creatures of the Norse wilds. Berserkers, trolls, witches and even the undead. After answering her son's many questions, Atreus' mother sent him back out. He fired a few arrows, missing with most of them. He wasn't a bad archer, really, but he wasn't easy on himself either. Frustrated, the little bairn sulked off into the woods. Don't sulk yourselves. Follow the boy to the next area. Atreus climbed up and sat cradled in the branches of one of his favourite trees. On days like this, he liked to close his eyes, listen to the forest, and let his mind wander. This kind of solitude never felt lonely to him, perhaps because he could hear things others could not. Ever since he could remember, the thoughts of others, animals mostly, could intrude upon his own. He couldn't much control it, and he didn't tell his mother or father of it, but it only added to the boy's absolute captivation with what adventure might lie past his all too familiar woods. As Atreus craned his head in an attempt to hear even farther, a desperate cry for help crept in at the edges of his mind. Not a whisper in his ears, but rather a shout inside his skull. Atreus shot up, and as he did, heard a second voice, a call to adventure, taunting him with the promise of a hero's journey. He jumped down from the tree and ran toward the voices. They grew louder and louder, overwhelming him to the point that he halted abruptly, stumbling as his inertia nearly overtook him. He hesitated there, knowing it would displease both his parents to venture further. In response, the voices only grew more urgent, demanding his attention. The lad could barely concentrate with this cacophony filling his head. He decided to follow the cry for help. Even as he did, the other voice derided the boy, calling him a coward. But if Atreus were to disobey his parents, it would have to come with good reason. Surely, he thought, they couldn't be too upset at him for responding to a distress call. Nearly convincing himself this might be true, Atreus took a deep breath and stepped out of the protected woods he'd known all his life into the foreboding Norse wilds. Delve deeper into the woods, unless of course you're too frightened. Making his way through Midgard's unfamiliar terrain, the pained cry of a wounded doe rang out, carried on the frigid breeze. After attempting to study the patterns of nearby tree roots to use as a guide back home, he set off in the direction of the injured animal. He imagined himself as the gods from his mother's stories, travelling to distant realms on the great tree Yggdrasil. He was brave Tyr, mapping the unknown for the good of all the realms. He was the mighty Ullr, on a hunt for honour and glory. He was... lost. Completely and hopelessly so. The woods now seemed to be a repeating maze of trees and jagged boulders. 
His growing panic was interrupted by sharp screams of agonising pain. The wounded animal was near and in true peril. Forgetting his own dilemma, Atreus shot toward the cries of the beast. And there, in a clearing near a creek, he saw it. A wounded doe lay on the ground. The matted, blood-stained fur on its chest heaved up and down as it struggled to breathe. An arrow jutted out of its neck. But what hunter would seek an innocent doe and fail to finish it off? The animal looked Atreus straight in the eye. Its pained grunts eased now as its pupils contracted. The one he had called had come. You're safe now. I'm here, Atreus said, clumsily attempting to comfort the poor soul. You can let go. The doe's strained breath became shallower. It took one final gulp of air in and ceased to move. Atreus laid his hands on the doe's heart and softly recited Norse death rites, inspired by his mother's teachings. The boy sighed and his eyes drifted upward. As they did, he noticed there was far too much blood on the ground for a simple arrow wound. The red stains in the snow trailed off into the deeper brush. Atreus jumped to his feet to follow it. What horrors await at the end of the trail of blood? There's only one way to find out. The boy didn't have to go far to understand. The trail of blood didn't belong to the doe, but to the hunter, who now lay in pieces at Atreus's feet. The boy's stomach rolled as he took in the scene. He held his breath, attempting to let the nausea pass. And that's when he heard something else. Something hidden by the dark forest, mere steps away and still breathing. He turned to see two creatures from his mother's stories. Heaving, vile, undead monsters of pure rage. Draugr. Atreus's eyes grew wide as they met the empty sockets where the Draugr's eyes were supposed to be. The larger one roared, then it charged! The boy went for his quiver. He found an arrow, but lost his footing. Crashing to the ground, the Draugr rushed ever closer. The larger one plucked Atreus from the ground. The monster bellowed, spraying rotten teeth and flaps of decaying gums. Its half-tongue flailed blindly like the death throes of a headless snake. It was... disgusting! In desperation, Atreus stabbed out with his arrow again and again and again, and by pure chance he connected, striking the Draugr through a hole in its skull. The monster dropped him as he continued to scream and stab. The boy was lucky, but there was no time to celebrate. As the second Draugr raised his blade, Atreus shot an arrow. It exploded against the Draugr's sword, shattering it to pieces. Quicker than the boy could react, a shard of the blade sliced into his arm. He yelled out in torturous pain. But as the Draugr drew in for the final kill, Atreus wasn't afraid anymore. He was angry. The blinding pain turned to white-hot rage as his ears pounded. His vision glazed to pure red. As the creature bellowed with fury, so did Atreus. Two warriors with nothing left but anger and pain. The last thing the boy saw before the world went black was a ghostly white hand grabbing the Draugr by its throat. A small quiet question escaped Atreus' lips before he fell unconscious. Father? Oh. That's the soul leader. 
If that kills us, that's it. No Valhalla, no hell, no afterlife, ever. It does not attack. Ah. Oh. Mom made them sound more dangerous than that. Then do not drop your guard. Come. sound like a soul eater. What do you think it is? We shall see, boy. <laughs> <laughs> 